And before he knew it, he said, Ash, it's true. And he submitted and surrendered to Jesus. God saved. Now, boss, God saved overnight. Now, after he now God saved, he said, ah, but what is this mark on your head? He said, Ash, hey, pastor, there was an argument. He said, no, they beat you up. <laughs> they will now all laugh together. It's so interesting to see so saved. Rescue from smoking. I'm telling you, sir. So interesting. You see 12 year old guys smoking. What are we doing when souls are dying? And the Bible says, He that sweat and repent, receiveth wages. There is a pay. There is a pay for souls. There is a pay for it. God pays you bigly. He does not pay you like men will pay you, He pays you in a special way. Glory to God. Glory to God. But love is a covenant channel through which the supernatural flows. When we show this love, then it's a channel through which we see the supernatural. I once shared here, among those my, my privileged converts, one of them has not gone to the toilet for 30 days. He, he couldn't defecate for 30 days. For 30 days. And by the time I saw, we saw, I saw her at that time, you know, like my rumors, the way I play. I said, ah, you've not shied? He didn't shy for 30 days? I said, what? I said, fine, you will shy right now. He said, no, 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 no. I want to do it later. Okay, we prayed. And after we prayed, I said, go now. He said, no, pastor, you make jest of me. I said, fine. Okay, um, today, you will do it. By 5 p.m., he entered the house. And, <laughs> you know the remaining story. <laughs> Even those who did not go for three days, you know the, the way the house looks like. He said the house scatter. <laughs> but you see, it's an affliction. And she was going through excruciating pain in her stomach for 30 days. But thank God for love for souls that brought out her soul from pains. Supernatural flowed. She was healed. There's one of them that had epilepsy. Epilepsy that they have relegated her to the point of, you know, to the point of collecting grant of 1,400 per month. 29 year old girl that, you know, she had epilepsy and as a result, doctors have relegated her that just be collecting grants till die. And even her mother is so excited of, for the call of the money. You understand by, what, by, what, by the time I say what I'm about to say now. Now, by the grace of God, by privilege, by the supernatural power of God, we pray for her that day. And after that, we prayed, she got healed. Same day, her skin changed to the point that when I saw her yesterday, I could not recognize her until my brother said, Ah, look at, look at. He said, It's not the one. I've left her before they say, It's the one. Her skin has changed. But the mother still refused her to come to church because her mother is not happy that she's healed. Wicked world. Because of 1,400, sir. Aye. You see, there are some stories I hear that, that is as if, you know, it's, it's so, so, it's so hot. That because of this. But you see, he said, I said, can't you come to church tomorrow? He said, ah, you know my mother. Ish, ish. This age will just cause koala. Because the truth is, it's he, not helping matters at all. It's not helping matters. But what I'm trying to establish is this. The love of God causes, she's been, she's 29 years old. Still stay with her mother. No hope for husband as an issue of epilepsy. But the supernatural brought her out. But you see, the stumbling block is still the mother. When we operate in law, we operate in the supernatural. Epilepsy, sir. Jesus set her free. Today, God is setting you free. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Jesus raised Lazarus out of compassion. John chapter 11, 13. 5 to 36. Jesus wept. And when he wept, what happened? He wept not because he can't raise him. He wept out of passion. Tears comes out only when you can't control it again. Remember? Tears comes out unconsciously. You don't think, <laughs> it don't come. Something, something must be generated. <laughs> it's a lie. Except you are being you are a professional crier, you know. There are some professional criers. They pay them to cry. So maybe those ones, they inject their body with some things that <laughs> to come out. But naturally, it doesn't happen. 
something must have touched you to cause the hormones to generate the tear gland to release water. So Jesus was not crying because he couldn't raise him. No, he was crying because, oh, and they said, oh, see how much he loved him. Love brought out power. Power brought out answer. When we are in love, we are in power. When we are in power, we have the answer. Jesus brought Lazarus out. Today, you are entering the realm of the miraculous in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You are entering the realm of miraculous in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Quickly, today is our encounter with destiny service. And I see God causing us to encounter destiny yeah. in a grand style. 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 Yeah. Saints, understand that destiny is all about living. You are created to live for destiny. You are created to live for destiny. If you look at the word destiny, the end product is destination. Destiny, destination. Which means you are destined to de for a particular destination. Ultimate, ultimate counsel of God is destiny. The ultimate counsel of God for man is destiny. God's ultimate plan. And that's why their plan are in phases. They are in stages. And they are in classes. You can't enter grade 12 without going to grade 1. Glory to God. I say glory to God. For example, from the word of God, we understand that every child of God is a child of destiny. Every child of God is a child of destiny. The Bible says, His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us unto glory and virtue. You are called unto glory, not to shame. Therefore, every shame in your life today is totally terminated in the name of Jesus. Yeah. No more shame in the month of June. Yeah. No more shame in the month of June. Yeah. According as his divine power has called us, has called us, has called us, has called us. He has given us all things. And you see, the truth is this. If you can understand that all things are in your hands, you don't struggle for anything again. He has given us all things. You know, the truth is this. Before you were formed, God has finished you. God will always start the beginning from the end. That is, he has ended you before he started you. Your, the Bible says he declares the end from the beginning. So, it is you that your life looks like casualty. To God, it's like a fume. He has finished it and he says the thought I have for you is a thought of good. No, people, to give you an expected end. God has already ended your life in a glorious state. So no matter what you are going through now, it's just a face. There was a time in my life I was walking on the streets. Hawking on the streets several years ago is not walking on the streets several years after. Life, destiny, is like faces. Things may be hard today, but does not mean that it is part, is, I mean, it, it will be hard forever. Take for example, the story of Joseph. Joseph was from the pit to Potiphar's house. From Potiphar's house to the prison. From prison to the palace. From palace to the prime minister. It was a journey. He was initially in the pit. Genesis chapter 37 and, and um, chapter 39 and verse 2. He was in the pit. I don't know the pit you are right now. Understand that it is a process to your own throne. He was in the pit. Pit when there's no water. Pit when everything. What is a pit life? A pit life is a dark life. 
A pit life is a confused life. You can't be in a pit and see light. So maybe you're in a place where your life lacks light. I like to give you good news that you're in the process of becoming a prime minister. Yeah. You are in the process of entering the palace. Yeah. It's the truth. Every scripture is meant for our example. To teach us that this is the way it happens. But yet, it will happen for you that way. So, should in case you are in the pit now, I speak to your life. This month of June, your palace will open in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You are appearing in the palace in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Joseph was a man of destiny. Joseph was a man of destiny. And as a result of encounter with the word of God, he encountered destiny. That's why encounter with destiny is fundamentally encounter with God's word. Encounter with destiny is encounter with God's word. When you encounter God's word, you can't remain the same. The Bible speaking book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 8, the Lord had sent a word into Jacob. A word. A word. The Lord has sent a word. Say it. Don't look for people when you're in the pit. Look for God. Don't look for people. Look for the right word. He sent a word in Jacob and it has lighted. One word from the Lord is what will make you a world celebrity. One word from the Lord. One word from the Lord. Get it from God. When people say, I remember those days when I first came to ministry and people were saying all manner of stuff. I said, God's counsel shall stand. That is my statement. And I'm still saying to you now. No matter what you do to me or do against me, God's counsel shall stand. God's counsel shall stand. God's counsel shall stand. That statement has never left my mouth for the past eight, nine years. God's cancer abuse me. God's cancer shall stand. Because I know if I can stand with God's cancer, I will stand up forever. God's cancer, God's cancer. If you can stand with God's cancer, you can fail. God's cancer is not to shamify you. God's cancer is not to ridicule you. God's cancer is to elevate you. God's cancer is to establish his intention for creating you. So irrespective of what they do to you, God's cancer shall stand. Irrespective of the harassment, God's cancer shall stand. Because before I formed you, I knew the and I've ordained you. God's ordination is not for your reduction. God's ordination is not for your shame. God's ordination is for your elevation. And this month, you are going higher in the name of Jesus Christ. Say it again. Amen. Encounter with God is encounter with his word and encounter with his word is encounter with destiny Genesis chapter 6 verse 5 to 18 in verse 8 precisely the Bible says and Noah found grace with God Noah found grace with God in the midst of all the men Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord this morning you will find grace with God in the name of Jesus Christ yeah. You will find grace when you get in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every stage is always accompanied with his grace. Every stage will always be accompanied with his grace. And the grace of God is always accompanied with his glory. Psalm 84 verse 11. The Lord will give grace and glory. Every time you see God's grace, glory follows. There is no how God's grace will be with you and you will see shame. It's not possible. <laughs> it's impossible. Which means not God's grace. Every time God's grace is available, glory is expected. Every time God's grace, he said, the Lord will give grace and glory. So if Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. But today, Paul, the glorified. Everywhere, everywhere today now, there's no person that will preach today without mentioning Paul, somehow, somehow. Somehow, 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 somehow. Because he was a man of grace. He was a man of grace. He was a man of grace. So every time we enjoy grace, we enjoy God's glory. Today, every shame is clearing for glory to arrive in your life in the name of Jesus. So whenever you find yourself now that is not showing forth God's glory, it's not God's plan. Anywhere you find yourself, 
to, I mean, Joseph, in the pits, he was still being respected. <clears throat> in the prison, he was still the head. In Potiphar's house, the wife of Potiphar still preferred a prisoner, a slave to the master. By grace and glory. Grace and glory distinguish a slave. Grace and glory place a slave above his master. Mm, that's terrible. Which means where you find yourself, no matter how horrible it is, grace must distinguish you. No matter how painful it is, no matter, no matter, the grace of God will always help you to stand out. Let men, you know, despise you. Let men look down on you. The grace of God will always expose the hand of God upon your life. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I say glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, let me just mention one or two points. There are ways we have encounter with destiny. Number one is through a raw encounter with God. A raw encounter with God. A raw. Raw simply means, you know, not unadulterated. No human connection. Not because I met this man. Eh, eh, direct from God. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. The Bible says, And the Lord has said to Abraham, The Lord has said, the Lord, So it was a direct voice. The Lord spoke to Abraham. This morning, God will speak to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the Lord had said to Abraham, the Lord had said, please let desire God. What are you saying? Let desire to hear. 1999, by the grace of God, when my daughter came to Kenya land, I will not forget in my life. You see, raw encounters, you don't forget. Raw encounters. I said, God, he asked us to ask for seven things. And I said, God, number one, I want to make a standard. Number one prayer point in my life. Over the years, make heaven. Number two, Lord, I want to be hearing you per second. Per second voice. Because you see, that time, MTI has not said per second in Nigeria. Just see per minute. Per second, per second. I want to be hearing you per second. If you can hear God per second, you will be in charge per second. Jesus said, As I hear, I judge. And my judgments are true because I'm here. I'm, I'm, pe pa pa the connection with God is per second. There's no difference. You see him, you see God. But it takes ability to hear God. Your decisions are always right. Your actions are always right. The one that looks wrong is right because you may not know it is, is right at the beginning. And since that time, since 1999, by the grace of God, till now, I've been hearing God by privilege. It was my own. When people were asking for Lord, give me this, give me. Lord, I want to be hearing you per second. If you can hear God, the word will hear you. If you can hear God, look at the men of God people are listening to today because they hear God. Moses had God. The word, listen to him. Elijah had God. The prophet will bow, submit to him. When you hear God, situations will bow to you. When you hear God, because the voice of God, look at the call to worship we read. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars in Lebanon. The voice of the Lord thundered it like fire. When you hear God, men will not hear you again. They will be hearing God through your voice. That's why when we decree, it comes to pass. Because it's not a voice. It is now his voice. And his voice melts mountains. His voice causes mountains to skip like rams. It causes the sea to drive back. I mean, to part it and it down. So when we hear God, destiny comes alive. When we hear God, Cover destiny is being unraveled. When we hear God, every situation that looks bleak becomes shining. You must hear God this morning. Amen. You must hear God this morning. Amen. You are confused about marriage because you are here to hear God. When you hear God, everything will open up. When you hear God, every stagnation will become promotion. Saints, when you hear God, men will be looking for means to hear you. Men will be looking for me to hear you because the voice of God is the answer to the problems of men. The voice of God is the answer to the problems. So when you hear God, and hear this, the voice of God may come in one way, but can have answers in multiple ways. Hmm. 
When you carry the Bible, Psalm 23 verse 1 to you can mean the Lord is my shepherd, provide my need. It can be for protection for somebody else. One voice from God can give 10,000 answers to men. One voice. That's why when you hear God, you are in charge of life situations. Look at our father today, Bishop Wedebo. He had God. The hour has come. The, today now, millions upon millions look for his voice because of one voice. Millions upon millions look for his voice. Not just his voice, but the voice of God inside his voice. Genesis chapter 12, 1 to 4, like he said, when he speaks, he leads. When he speaks, he leads. Maybe you are confused today. Today, God will speak in your direction in the name of Jesus. When he speaks, he leads. Locate his voice. You will escape the noise of life. The voice of God is a solution to escaping the noise of life. The voice of God is the solution to escaping the noise. When you are confused, don't listen to men. Listen to his voice. There's someone that um, I, I encountered some time ago. That's why I be careful about marriage. She, the person got married to someone, and after they, they got married, the reason I always t- t- talk about stories is because to teach other lessons, not to fall into the same error. If they didn't write the stories in scriptures down, how, would, how are we going to know what to follow? Now, this person got, um, got married to someone, and after he got married to the person, you know, they, they had children. But meanwhile, this person in, the, in his own country has been dating someone before. But eventually, he didn't marry the person. So, got married to someone in another country, and eventually, the person that got married to, they had, they had children with, but they got married, um, they had children with, after some years, he said he's not doing it again. Now, he now tried to go back to the former one he was dating. So, by the time he met that one, he now brought down to the country. After he brought the one, he now said, okay, fine. Um, he now told the person that let's that okay, we'll see you. Um, I'm about to get married, so continue your life. That one, I said, no, you can't marry you. And after this other person, the new person has been with him, and they're about to marry. Now, that other person was working in a very good place, sold her properties, sold everything, and now came to meet the, the guy. Now, the guy now said, sorry, um, I have to rent a place for you somewhere else. You'll be my second wife. If you, if you lose his voice, your life will be lost forever. That's why don't just, don't just, don't, you see, oh, yo, yo, oh, yo, 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 your destiny will be realized. I'm telling you, that's why many are missing it. You look at shape to shape your life. You will shape your life to hellfire. I told the person, I said, because you lack God's voice. If, God, if you have listened to his voice, you will end up in error. Now, confused. I had to tell her, now go to this mountain and go and pray. Stay there alone and hear what God is saying. Maybe I catch like that today. To step out a challenge. Inside is fire. Life is under tension. Anyone in that category today, God will set you free. In the name of Jesus Christ. God says that I will make thee a great nation and I will bless thee. And make the name great. And that shall be a blessing. But it's, that's when you follow my voice. That's when you allow his voice. So without his voice, you can enjoy the best of God. But to experience the, the voice of God, you must be spiritually sound. Be spiritually sound. If you are not spiritually sound, you can't pick his voice. In the midst of all, 1 Corinthians 2.14, the Bible says that, but the natural man receiveth not the things which of, of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. When God speaks, he speaks as a spirit, not as a human being. So if you are using your pinna to want it to hear, you won't hear. I mean, your biological ear or your human ear. You need the spiritual ear. 
which is your heart. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes incline my, I mean, my ways. 23, 26 of Proverbs. So we need to understand that our spiritual eyes, spiritual hearts must be opened. Give me your heart and let your, my eyes inc- observe my ways. So when your heart is purified, you have direct access to his voice. When your heart is sound, don't just travel. Like I keep saying, don't just travel. Traveling is not the solution to your challenge. The solution is God's instruction. Be spiritually sound. That is, fast and pray. Lord, show me what are you saying. Open my spiritual eyes. And from there, you enjoy the best of God. To see destiny fulfilled, one must remain steadfast in faith. Remain steadfast in faith. Because when God speaks, he may not come immediately. When God taught Abraham, he shall be part of many nations, it took 25 years. So you must remain steadfast in faith. Romans 4, 17, 21. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead and called the thoughts which were not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope. That is when the hope of today finishes, he still believed. It took 13 years for Joseph to become a prime minister. After seeing the vision, I tell you 17. So you need to remain steadfast. God showed me that I was with Papa. 1999 2000. It never came to pass on the 2010. Ten years after. He showed me when I was nobody, when I was still, you know, anywhere. But 10, 11 years after, remain steadfast. If God has shown you, He's faithful. You remain faithful. God is faithful. You remain steadfast. I didn't pray to become it. There were people that have big chests. You know, they look like God. He forget it. When God chose you, he has chosen you. Don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated about others. Be carried, be led by his voice. Remain steadfast. Believe that if he has said it, it will come to pass. Sir, what is driving me part time is what God has told me part time. That's what drives me. Remember I once said here, God told me. He said, I'm inside you like a mountain. Ah. That statement is still running my brain. I'm inside you like a mountain. He said, whatever fight you fight me, is enough. Is enough. He said, I'm in, have you ever spoken the mountain? I said, no, no. He said, I'm, in the, I'm the one inside the mountain. He said, no volcano can carry a mountain. I had it direct from God. Direct. He said, no flood can carry a mountain. He said, no wind can carry a mountain. Why? I'm the one inside the mountain. Saints, hear God. Hear God, you will not fear men. Hear God, you will not fear any boss. Hear God, you will dominate situations. Hear God, you will dominate circumstances. Hear God, you will be victorious over life. If you can hear God and say it, the voice of God generates faith. The voice of God generates faith. You don't even know why you speak the way you speak. Because the voice is the one speaking. Who is Moses beside Pharaoh? The voice of God enters Moses. Pharaoh, come out. Eh? The voice of God dominated the spirit of Moses. Thereby, he confronted what nobody could confront. This morning, the voice of God will dominate your situations. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. So, remain steadfast. Remain steadfast. This morning, whatever looks impossible, by the mighty hand of God, shall be, become possible in the name of Jesus Christ.